uh, as you can see, we're all loving this. Um, the, the three of you uh, actually gave me goosebumps, and, and I want to talk about a fourth person who was testified a, a few weeks ago for us. But Dr. Miller, you were talking about the ownership and the engagement of young people and the, the ability to take advantage of those brilliant, youthful minds. Uh, Mr. Fishman, you talked about the inspirational component of all of this and the, the, the striving to go beyond you know, where we'd been before. And Dr. Jacob, you talked about the teamwork. I mean, I did get goosebumps as you were talking about the apocryphal janitor. I'm helping get us to the moon. And that's what this is about. We've talked about the tangible results and all the spin-offs, and we've talked about the intangible uh, a lot as part of the piece that brings Democrats and Republicans uh, together to do something bigger than any of us, a lot bigger than any of us. We had a young woman who came in and testified a few weeks ago. She had the brilliance to knit together thousands of signals taken from all around the world to draw the black hole. And she was inspirational, just as you gentlemen are, in testifying to us to really try to find the ability of this nation to do something bigger again. Now, you know, Ami Berra was joking around, but I've been very single-minded in terms of a bigger mission, one that requires consistency of purpose and direction and ingenuity. There's an element of competition. You know, we've talked about rivalry or national security or whatever between the Russians and America back then, but we have that element uh, today, but I see this as being something that's going to be international in scope, public-private in nature, and, you know, if we can get our, when we get our astronauts to Mars by 2033, if not earlier, it's going to take the whole world to do it, and it's going to take a lot of private uh, effort as well, but led, in my opinion, by NASA because of its brand and its unbelievable uh, staff. So I'm just going to turn it. I have no idea what you guys are going to say, but what do you think about getting to Mars by 2033? Well, the one thing I'll mention is uh, that's, I'm sure that's why you put that on there, because 2033 is, it's not easy to get to Mars, but that's one of the easiest times. Right, because the orbits are closest right. for a long time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, I think, uh, what always helps with the space program is a sense of urgency. And, uh, you know, it's good to have deadlines, as long as they are deadlines that we can reasonably make. And we can put the resources behind them and so forth. And, uh, you know, so I'm all in favor of 2033. Mr. Fishman, what do you think? As well, a historian you, and a writer. You, you said something interesting. You said it, it will take the whole world. If you go back and look at um, John Kennedy's speech in May 61, the first go to the moon speech, um, there's, a, there's a wonderful passage at the end where he says, if we succeed in putting an astronaut on the moon by the end of the decade, it will not be that astronaut who went. It will, in fact, be all of us in America because if we're going to do it, it's going to take us all. We've, we've heard from the janitor, the, the spacesuits were sewn by hand. The, the, the circuitry in that advanced computer we've talked about was woven by hand because there was no other way of manufacturing it. And so you said it will take the whole world. I think Mars is the kind of project that will take the whole world. There are not many countries that could galvanize that kind of project, and that would be a a different undertaking than Apollo, but I think the idea that getting everybody on board uh, is, is a really good one, and it's an echo of what Kennedy said in May 61. Dr. Jacob, and I do want to uh, acknowledge my friend, the governor, former governor of Florida, because after he listened to the three of you testify, his one word was inspiration, but Dr. Jacob. Well, I, I think, um, when we talk about uh, getting to Mars or other uh, bodies in the system and, and identifying that as a goal, I think what it also reflects is 
uh, not just one mission, but it, it talks about uh, a presence in space. It talks about, uh, again, bringing humanity's curiosity and humanity's research capabilities beyond our planet. You know, we're already on Mars, uh, of course, with the rovers, and we're learning extraordinary things, and that's laying a foundation for uh, a human mission to, to Mars in some ways. Uh, so I think it, it really kind of represents not just we're going to get to Mars and uh, we accomplished it, which to some degree uh, you can say about Apollo, we had that specific goal and we accomplished it and, and we sort of moved on in a lot of ways. But I do think uh, getting to, uh, to Mars probably will represent um, a, a, a human presence in space that but we will finally become truly a spacefaring nation when we accomplish that goal. So I think it, it's reflective of Apollo, but I also think it is a, a, um, a, be a beginning of a different orientation of humanity in space. Thank you very much.